So I think it was about three years ago when I just started installing a lot of television antennas, I had a call from a woman who asked me if I could come out to her house and install a TV antenna and she wanted it to go to three different televisions. So I told her I'd go check out the situation and uh, once I got there I found out she already had an antenna on the roof and so all I had to really do was wire it up to the three TVs. Well I figured it'd be a walk in the park and I just went ahead and put a couple splitters in the line like this thinking I'd have the signal coming from the antenna to each TV in this manner. Well, it wasn't quite as easy as I thought it would be. It turned out that the first television got great reception, second TV was missing some channels, and the third TV had no channels at all. So it dawned on me there's quite a few losses in the, in the system, and I, I figured at the time it probably had a lot to do with the splitters weakening the signal. And so what I did was I went ahead and bought myself a two-piece antenna amplifier. And for those of you that are not familiar with the two-piece antenna amplifiers, they're really great amplifiers because what they do is they amplify the antenna signal right underneath the antenna and they send it back down this way to the televisions. Well, they do need power. The antenna amplifier needs power. So you have a device called a power inserter that's plugged into your house and it sends power this way up to the antenna amplifier. And then the signal from the amplifier is sent back down this way. Actually, they're generally called pre-amplifiers. I keep calling it an amplifier. Anyway, I went ahead and installed everything and had to go get a couple different splitters too because not all the splitters allow power to pass through them. Some of them have isolation where only the signal can pass through, but not an actual DC voltage. So I had to make sure I bought two splitters that had something called a DC pass-through. And the same is with satellite systems. You'll often see this where you'll have a a splitter like this, one side might say SAT on it, indicating satellite, because the satellite LNB needs power as well. The other side can pass a signal and there's isolation. Anyway, I went ahead and put the whole system together thinking everything would be great. And when I was done, guess what? Same problem. I had great reception on the first TV, missing channels, second one, third TV, no channels at all. I'm looking the system over and I'm thinking, what could I have possibly done wrong? The way I calculated everything, I couldn't see how I would end up not having enough strength at the third TV. Well, the next thing I tried was a distribution amplifier, and that took care of the problem. Distribution amplifier, like this one here, basically allows you to put your antenna input into one of the inputs here. It's got power going to it, and it sends the signals out at a strong level to all of your TVs. And this one's designed for four TVs. Some will do even more. Anyway, that solved the problem, but I was thinking about the job afterward and I thought, you know, what might I have done to avoid putting a distribution amplifier in there? One thing I believe would have made a big difference is if I had used, let's say, a non-powered splitter like this. I call it a passive splitter because it's not using any actual power. If I had had equal length going to each television, I'm guessing that may have had some bearing on my signal strength being stronger. But I was trying to use existing wires that were already in the house and so it was kind of a challenging situation. But just for the fun of it, I set up a situation here where I wanted to duplicate the same scenario I had on the job site. And, oh, there we go. And basically what I did was I hooked up a TV to three different splitters that are all hooked together. I guess you could call that daisy chaining them. And I wanted to see what it did to the signal as far as weakening it. And much to my surprise, I barely saw any change on my signal meter. So I went ahead and added a few more splitters. I figured, well, if I add seven splitters, surely that's going to uh, screw up my signal. And it's still usable. As you can see, I'm, I'm looking at my monitor right here. And the signal is not all that bad. In fact, let me bring up my signal meter here. You see the signal bouncing around a little bit because of the fact that we've got cars going by outside here. But I'm just using a little indoor loop here. And uh, it's uh, doing a halfway decent job even going through all these splitters here. So then I was thinking about terminators. Now terminators are the little 75 ohm resistors you're supposed to screw on the, the uh, ports you're not using here. And they're supposed to work kind of like a dummy load. And I guess they can absorb reflections that can be in the, in the signal, or in the cable. 
And anyway, just for the fun of it, I tried removing all my uh, terminators here. And I wanted to see how that affected the signal. Again, I didn't see any change. So I'm guessing the length of coax going between each splitter had something to do with it too. It must have something to do with reflections in the signal causing a phase phase collision, I guess you could say. And, um, and I guess the terminators work kind of like a dummy load. They're supposed to help absorb that. But I'm not using a lot of coax in between each splitter, as you can see. Anyway, just thought that was worth considering there. Um, still learning as I go, even though I've been doing this now for about three years. Actually, a lot longer than that, but I've been doing quite a bit of it for the last three years. So for what it's worth, there you have it. I always appreciate your input, and uh, a lot of you guys who watch my videos are a lot smarter than I am, so if you have any comments, feel free. As always, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. There's the actual, there's a preamp right there. This is the part that goes on the mast. And that's a distribution amplifier.